So this year makes the 20th anniversary of one of the best movies ever made. Since it's the 20th anniversary, Regal Theaters is causing a re-release. This movie is filled with a beautiful score and an awesome soundtrack, followed by a script that's really engaging and character-driven that it's honestly better than its predecessor. Such a far massive improvement from the last movie expands the story, expands the themes and the characters. Yes, you're right. We are talking about Shrek 2. Fiona and Charming will be together. Excuse me, I need to have an ogre taken care of. There's only one fella can handle a job like that. <laughs> Pray for mercy from. By this point, Shrek 2 is a movie that has been enriched by the internet and amplified by its memes and meta humors. Loads and loads of memes since since I was since I was a child. People have memed this movie. It's still going on. The memes are strong. The kids who grew up the kids who grew up watching the movie in theaters and DVD. I've definitely have kept loving this movie. The fan base is still going strong, and since it's been around for so long, it's been talked to death indefinitely, so there's nothing really new I can add or say to the conversation of Shrek 2. But I kind of just got here, so gave me a chance to talk about this, since I have a platform where I can talk about my own stuff now. Now this isn't going to be your normal review or even your normal retrospect on the movie. I'm not going to go scene by scene and do an in-depth analysis because like I said this movie has been talked to death and there's plenty of videos out there that, would do, that will do a better job than I could ever do. I'm not sure there's anything different or anything to add from me personally. So I'm kind of just going to sit here for a few minutes and kind of chill and gush about this absolute masterpiece that we all grew up in love. And watched it yesterday and I can definitely say it still holds up, it's still really good. I have this on Leatherbox as a 5 out of 5 because it's un unironically perfect. Please follow me on Leatherbox. And the story of Shrek 2 in its own right is a lot smarter and more engaging than the first movie. While the first movie had a rather like confined set of locations, Shrek 2 expands it with adding more locations than we ever saw in the last movie. With adding the Kingdom of Far Far Away which becomes a mainstay for the rest of the franchise. The bar where the villains hang out and even the fairy godmother and its breweries adds a lot of new mainstays and locations and it just expands the world which you would want in a sequel and this movie introduces the legendary Puss in Boots who are so goaded in this movie and it's really funny he dropped some of the funniest lines in the movie Catnip. that's uh, no mind and also King the, also the King Fiona's father, which is played by John Cleese, and like I mentioned, Godmother, Prince Charming, and even the Queen, they all have a good presence in this movie. Fairy Godmother is definitely one of those villains where I can see be charming, but very threatening if she has to be, and it's made clearer in pretty much a lot of the scene season. The jokes in this movie also go a lot harder and are funnier in this movie than they have ever gotten in the first. They have ever. Okay, let me try that again. The jokes. In this movie are a lot funnier than they ever were in the last movie. For example, the scene where they arrive, the dialogue in this movie is really cleverly like written, and the scenes are all like cleverly edited too. Like I said, the scene when the scene when they arrive and then everyone goes silence to look at Shrek and Fiona, and then the Shri the the king and the queen are talking to each other while Shrek and Fiona are talking to each other as they walk up to each other. The back-to-back -back dialogue is really funny and cleverly handled. Same thing with the dinner scene. The dinner scene might be one of the best scenes of the movie.
and the pop culture references are good too, like the Spider-Man kiss and the O.J. Simpson chase, and others, along along with many other pop culture references. All right, but let's take out your zooms because the music and the soundtrack in this movie are amazing and go really hard. We are kept with the fairy-esque score of the first movie with the blend of pop songs and rock songs that make you go up and down. Because of how funky they are and every song enchants the scene it's played in. Like the scene when Shrek looks for Fiona after he becomes a human and a cover of Changes by David Bowie plays since he's changed into a human from an ogre. <laughs> Can we acknowledge how ballsy it is, in my opinion, to change the way your already iconic main character looks and have him like that for almost half the movie? I'm telling you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Human Shrek is peak Shrek. All the all the cover all the covers in this movie are arguably better than their than their original counterparts, in my opinion, because. Everyone talks about the cover of the Fairy Godmother, but no one ever talks about the Fro Fro cover. And it's honestly, God, it's the best end credit song they could have chosen and made for this movie. No other kids movie will have the same end credits, like like Impact as Shrek 2. And I bust, I bust this song every now and then because of how good it is to listen to and even sing to. The ending, the ending dance song being sung by Antonio Banderas and Eddie Murphy is just peak, and I don't understand why, why, but it's very evident that Antonio Banderas really likes to play fucking prison boots, and it, I don't understand, but it's really awesome and really fucking funny. Back to the big screen, it's just nothing but a joy. There's a charisma, revolutionized drop. What? But on a quick side note, it's jarring seeing prison boots in the old animation style again after getting used to the paintbrush aesthetic from The Last Wish. But the last thing I want to talk about is the themes of this movie and having to know who you are and if willing to change for someone is worth it. If Shrek, is, if Shrek 1 is about finding love, then Shrek 2 is about maintaining love. The character arc that Shrek goes through in this movie is really great on how it's written and whenever he deserves and whether he deserves the love he gains from being with Fiona and even his friends to an extent everyone tells him that he doesn't deserve it and he almost succumbs to it but he prevails in the end by pushing through and proving he deserves Fiona and Fiona deserves him and even the king goes through an arc to whether to choose whether what's best for him in his kingdom and what's best for him and his daughter Fiona in the end, this movie is a masterpiece, and I can't believe it's been 20 years since its release. And... My, my release, as I'm old as Shrek 2. Does that mean it's... It's... It's all ogre?